Hey guys, thank you so much for coming back to my channel, Kate Boyle Crafts. I'm Kate, and today we're gonna take a little bit of a break from doing epoxy, and what we're going to do is do a print and cut using the Silhouette Studio. So if you're a little bit newer to Silhouette and you haven't ventured out to doing a print and cut yet, then definitely stay tuned. Um, I did wanna apologize beforehand. I didn't realize until it was way too late that there is actually an icon in the top right-hand corner of the video. Um, so the buttons that we will be selecting behind there is just the send feature. So as you follow along with me, um, that's just the button that we'll be using. Uh, I apologize again. I didn't realize until it was too late. Um, um, so just stay tuned and we will get started. All right, guys. So now we have um, our Silhouette Studio open. So we're going to come over here and we are going to open up our file. And this one I just have titled Memoji because I think that this is adorable and I've been wanting to do this for quite some time. So let's get that open. Okay. So it looks like um, it's already put it to the letter size. We're just going to increase our little girl here so that way we can get a better look for whenever we trace. So this border here, it's already put on the letter size, but let me show you guys how you can change it if it doesn't. So right here with media size, if you select um, the 12 by 12, it's going to bring up your 12 by 12. But if you need to change it back to that letter size, you just select letter and it comes right back. Okay, so we're going to get her set up. And so now we're going to go over here to our trace. And we're going to do select trace area. And it looks like it didn't fill in her thumb. So let's increase the threshold a little bit. Okay, and then we're going to come down and do um, trace outer edge because we don't need everything traced because we're just going to cut around it. So now you can see your red around it. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually come over here to the modify panel after we have both of those highlighted and we're going to select crop. So you see this box is the original box for the photo. And then whenever you select crop, see how it, you see both of those. So you select that and now you only have the one. So that way you have a better idea of the true size of your photo without that extra border. So we're going to come back over to our trace and we're going to trace it again. And again, it didn't do the thumb. So let's increase that and trace outer edge. Okay. So you have your red border back. And I wanted to mention over here, you're, you might sometimes see this. So this is a very low resolution image. So it's going to have really bumpy lines around it. It's not going to be a crisp, clean trace. So what we're going to do to help this is we're going to do an offset. So whenever you do an offset, you're going to select that red line. I personally don't like the red line. So we're going to come over here and change the color. Mm, I don't want to do white because I'm not going not might not be able to see it too well. So let's go and change it back to black. Okay, now we can see it. Okay, so once we have that ready, you're gonna come over here to your offset panel and select offset. And now you're gonna see that offset border around it. So I like a little bit smaller of an offset when I do mine. So I'm going to decrease this a little bit. Okay. That might work. Okay. So then you just hit apply. <clears throat> okay. So sometimes my computer takes a minute. Okay. All right, so now if we zoom in a little bit closer, you're going to see that original line. So we actually want to get rid of that line. That is because whenever we go to send it, um, we're going to, uh, then the machine will cut both. So we're just going to highlight it and delete it. And 
then now we only have that outer border. So we can go back out. And let's see. I think I'm going to change this. Let's see if we're able to use our dropper and see if we can find a cute color for the border. Let's try this lipstick color. Oh, uh oh, looks like it's in the front, so let's send it to the back. Okay. I don't really care for that, so let's try maybe the green. Let's see if the green works. Mm, don't think I care much for that either. Let's try one more. Let's try the brown. Yeah, I don't like that, so we're going to change it. I think we might just do the white, so let's just make everything transparent, so that way we're not going to see anything around it. So we're just going to, you're not going to see that border anymore, so you're just going to come over, highlight both, and you're going to group them both together. Okay, and then now we can go through and size it. Can bring her down. And from here, let's go ahead and add our registration marks before we get too far. So this is where you're going to add your registration marks. You can just select on. Now this other stuff I haven't used yet, so I'm not really sure what all that stuff does. I just use the basic registration marks. So I'm just going to go through and duplicate. Again, let's see how many we can fit on here. Bring her down. Okay. Now let's see if we can squeeze one more on there. So I think we might be able to. Okay, let's put her over there. Now you're going to see this up here, so let's center all of this, and sometimes I mess it up, um, but let's get, hey, I picked the right ones this time. Okay, so now you see that they are um, aligned properly and evenly spaced, so we're going to group that together, and then we're going to duplicate this line, bring this down. Highlight both lines, duplicate again, bring that down, looks like we might be able to fit one more row, let's duplicate another row, and I want all these to be aligned, let's go back to this. Oh, oops, I don't think that did it right. Hang on. Must have pushed the wrong one. It's this one. There we go. That fixed it. Okay, now that they are all aligned, we can just go through and group and put it within those registration marks. Okay. And so we're going to print control P or you can go up to the, the little top right. So we're going to change the printer uh, property. So I personally like using everyday photo paper matte. This seems to help the most whenever I print. Um, it gives a really good quality. So I like to use this one. Okay, and we're just going to um, let it print. 
like I said, I'm going to be using the, actually, no, I didn't say it. Um, I'm going to be using the Starcraft printable adhesive from 651 Vinyl. Um, so this is a product that can be used outdoor if you use the UV laminate. Um, for this particular project, I'm not going to be using that laminate because more or less I'm going to be using it um, more similar to a sticker, but the adhesive is considered permanent, so you will be able um, to use it outdoors or on anything that might need a little extra adhesive to adhere. So we're just going to get this printed out, and then we're going to send it through to cut. Sometimes my computer takes forever. I need a new computer, guys. Really. I just bought this one at Walmart um, a little over a year ago. It's done well for what I've needed, but it's definitely time to upgrade. So hopefully that is something I'll be able to do soon. Okay. <clears throat> so now that we have it printed... We're going to put it on our mat and we are going to um, then send it through. So we're going to select send and you're going to see where, you know, all your red lines have popped up now. So that means that that is where your machine's going to cut. set up okay so since I have a two a cameo two I have to manually um, change my blade so I think what we're gonna do I'm going to cut it on a blade four today so with the 651vinyl.com they have the cutter recommended cutter settings so um, the recommended is cardstock plane blade three with a force of 20 um, I'm going to change it to a blade four because my machine, um, for whatever reason, those recommended settings aren't quite what I need, but each machine is different. So I've upped my blade to four and we're going to use that. That is what has worked best for me with this material. Um, so just keep in mind if you're experiencing issues with it cutting, you're going to want to do your test cuts. So we're going to send it on its way now. Okay guys, so the last step was that we weeded away all of that excess. Uh, as you can see, we have no more registration marks. Um, it looks like the cut was perfect. So I'm going to peel one of these little gals off and show you guys just how adorable is that. I absolutely love this. I can't wait to use it, but I think I'm gonna stick this one right on my cameo over here. Um, and then I'll let you guys take a look. I'm not sure where to put it though, because I have quite a few things happening on mine. I have my name there. Um, and then of course I have glitter kind of just everywhere. So let's find a good spot. Maybe right about here. Just a cute little one to go with my name and my little collection that I have going here. Um, but, yep, I'm definitely going to use these for pretty much everything. Okay, guys, so I hope that that has helped you um, using the print and cut feature with Silhouette Studio. I hope that you guys had a lot of fun with me doing those little emojis. Doesn't it look just like me? <laughs> 
So if you guys have any questions, please feel free to comment below. Or if you have any suggestions for a new screen recorder or even a new computer, I'm looking at those Black Friday sales. Um, so if you guys have any recommendations for me, I'm all ears. So if you guys like this video, be sure to give it a big thumbs up like our little emoji. And uh, just let me know if you have any questions. Bye, guys.